Hello, and welcome to another episode of Meet the Candidates. I am joined today by one of the city council candidates for the upcoming 8th Ward election, uh, Dr. Joyce McNeil. Dr. McNeil, yes. thank you for being here today. Thank you for inviting me. Um, so I know you did one of these interviews already when you were in the primary race, but let's just assume some of our viewers haven't seen that one. Okay. Start over, and uh, you could talk a little bit about who you are, why you've decided to run for city council, um, and you know why you think you'd be a good fit. Okay. Well, I have passion uh, for public administration work. Um, I've been managing the uh, our city for the last eight years, uh, and I started developing this passion about ten years, um, working with the community, uh, working in and out of the school system, and um, I think I have the necessary uh, and the essential tools uh, to be a city council person. Uh, and, and moving the city forward from the uh, water crisis more into community resilience. Mm -hmm. um, there are some things that I think we need to bring to the table uh, to help us get to that point. Uh, how do we merge from a crisis into more of, of community resilience right. and helping get Flint back to a better place than what it was. Right. Um. Well, I want to talk more about that, but maybe before we get specifically into the water crisis, I'll just ask more generally, uh, what are maybe three to five of the main issues that you would like to focus on uh, as city councilwoman? Well, of course, um, I would like to work strictly with uh, reducing the water rates. That's essential into moving the city forward. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, I'm really concerned about uh, technology. I would like to see the city more Wi-Fi. Uh, we need to have more um, access to the internet. More internet access. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. A, it's imperative uh, in order to keep the millennium focused and keep uh, the millennium here as well as promoting business. Uh, we're gonna have to look at investing more, and I call it bridging the digital divide gap, mm -hmm. making sure that everybody has access to the right information. Yeah, and be able to get good access. Yeah besides Facebook. Mm -hmm. So water rates, internet access. Mm -hmm. Also, I um, kind of want to work with uh, companies just coming here. I really believe that, and investors, are, are just I do a lot of research and looking at different models, and mm -hmm. so we're headed on the right track, and I just want to be a part of that team and revitalizing some of these old buildings like we had opportunity to get Amazon. And I believe mm -hmm. we could have got Amazon if we had a facility that Amazon could walk right in a uh, distribution center. So I would like to work with investment uh, investors in doing that and also educating the public why we do what we do in order to move the city forward mm -hmm. and why it's going to be necessary that uh, certain things have to be torn down and revitalized in order to bring that job, uh, the type of job and manufacturer jobs back to the city. Right. Um, so a couple things you're bringing up that I want to follow up on. Economic development is one, but let's first go to one that you mentioned earlier, which is the water crisis. Mm -hmm. Moving the city from a water crisis to resilient mm -hmm. community. Um, what are the key uh, aspects or steps in that transition to your mind? Well, we go back to uh access to valuable information okay uh, and in order to move our uh, the city the way that they want to move it without creating such a hostile environment i believe that as people have an, a way to get vital information analyze the data themselves mm -hmm. and see what's available out there we have a lot of resources out there but we don't have access to those resources and we, they have been trying to get that information out of there but they're not doing a really good job at it, uh, even with your vote and uh, even with the passing of the charter. Um, when you only have less than 35 or 20 percent participation, you're really not doing a good job in getting your information to the public. Mm -hmm. It's the public administrator's job to make sure that we have uh, our community have access to the information. Um, maybe working with Comcast and making sure that we don't have to be um, 
going through Facebook or we should be just Wi-Fi. Um, my goal, I have some plans that I want to talk about in the future that I'm working with a company, an organization, and how to make that happen. So um, you're saying one of the issues in moving from the crisis to the recovery is to uh, make information on, on the water quality and on things, you know, all, all the other little bits of yeah. health information more available because yeah. you think people are just out of connection to yeah. that. We need more information about the safety of this water. We need, uh, if there's data out there, we need data that the public can decipher. We don't need all these different codes and stuff. Um, as it stand now, I don't think we have, uh, I know what Mark Elwood has said, but mm -hmm. that just one person. So you're also talking about not just getting the information that's put out there more connected to people through things like internet access, but also making publicly available yeah. more information on yeah. the water. More common language. Uh, yes, okay, it, It's going to be a common language where, okay, uh, mm -hmm. even a baby is weaned from a bottle at eight, at one year of age, because you know the damage what bottle can do. Mm -hmm. So it's just time for Flint to be weaned from bottled water. Right. And we got to ensure that everything is in place. We cannot continue to drink this contaminated bottled water, because bottled plastic bottles are poison. Right. It's not, we can't be doing this for five more years no, this way. Um, but you think to get to that point, there needs to be more of a public kind of open dialogue around the water system than what currently exists. Am I, is that, am I translating what you're saying? Correctly? Yeah, I think so. And uh, I promised the community that I would relate back what the community is saying, what the public is saying. Right. And one of the things I think that would help us uh, move out of this crisis to have a health summit, mm -hmm. a panel of doctors. Um, during the water crisis, a lot of voices was not heard. They addressed mm -hmm. a certain gender and a certain age group, which left out in a big population of other people. Mm -hmm. And I think it's time that these voices be heard. They have questioned you know, your baby boomers, uh, your younger adults, mm -hmm. uh, your millennia and that part has not been addressed. Mm -hmm. So I think it's time now that, hey, let's come back to the table uh, so that the doctor can, when you go to your doctor, if he know what was in the water, what are you going through? So maybe he can make a, a better decision treating you. Mm -hmm. Because right now I'm finding out that doctors are reluctant to do their job because they don't have all the data from the research to say that if you had this, this is the side effect. And I think if we had a summit mm -hmm. with a panel of doctors. Different kinds of experts, mm -hmm. you know, too. Yeah. Because, yeah. Med what because doctors don't always know a lot about environmental right. health, yeah. too, yeah. you know. In, in a and, that, and that is true. But then there's, we have to understand there's consequences of drinking any type of toxin. Sure. And so I think mm -hmm. that if we could let people's voices be heard mm -hmm. and, and get them opportunity to be heard. I think we have a better way of moving Flint forward when mm -hmm. you get everybody voice included. Mm -hmm. um, and what about some of the debates around the water source? I mean, that has really escalated, particularly this last week with the, the federal judge uh, demanding, you know, that city council members reach an agreement, um, a long-term plan, agreement on a long-term plan for the city's water source by the end of the day tomorrow. Um, are uh, I guess, are you happy with Mayor, the Mayor Weaver's Gleewa proposal, or what's your position on, on all of these disputes going on? I don't know if it's Mayor Weaver's proposal, or is it the government proposal? That's true, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't want to just label it as that, but I That's know fair. for yeah. uh, certain that the resident and myself, we don't have enough valid information to make a decision. I'm not uh, for a 30-year contract. Um, we have one of the greatest resources here, and that's that water plant. Mm -hmm. And we need to stabilize that water plant. We need to uh, work on that water plant and bring that water plant back to cold. I don't think Flint should be obligated because we was put into this situation. Uh, I just think that we should maybe stay on for a certain time, give us time to heal, give the public 
a t uh, time to have a voice. Now that things done quiet down, right. I know when we first started out, we wanted Detroit. And then now I think people done settled down a little bit and they want to regroup. We wasn't thinking about a 30 year contract, but we don't know what's in this whole water deal and what's in this whole lawsuit. Right. So we right now we're at a standstill. Right. Right. And I think city council had enough time to really get this information to the public. Right. Um, so going back to what we were talking about before, a little bit of um, economic development in the area. Uh, you know, I know one major complaint is that there's a lot of economic development downtown, but not as much in some of the other areas of the city. I'm sure some areas of the Eighth Ward. Um, you know, what would you do to to bring more economic development to that area? Focus it in your your neighborhoods. Well, um, we have to be clear on one thing. We have to have economic development downtown. Mm -hmm. It has to start downtown. It's not like we're trying, people are trying to ignore downtown. Sure. Okay. But in order to bring a city back, you have to start with downtown. Then it, as downtown grows, then it's supposed to grow all the way out. But what I'm finding out that we are neglecting our high tax base area city by focusing on one low income city. I'm in the eight ward and my ward is deteriorating very fast, mm -hmm. certain section. It's a big ward, yeah. but uh, our houses are deteriorating. Is uh, So we need more, some funding to come over there so we can keep our property tax up. And um, I'm working with business now, I'm talking to business owners, working with nonprofit organization. How can uh, we bring some of those resources? Because uh, we all do better when we all do better. And at this point now, there's a different uh, environment over in the eight ward. Uh, the income is very low over there. There's a lot of abandoned houses. So um, I'm reaching out for help mm -hmm. as well as the community to help us with that eight ward, that Fenton area, mm -hmm. over in that area, right. and Eisenhower area. All right, great. Well, we are going to go to a short break, okay. uh, but stay tuned and we will be back for the second half of our conversation with Dr. Joyce McNeil after this. They say you don't have to be so strong, but this is my mother, my purpose. Strength is not optional. See, I lift her now like she raised me then, so I know my strength is super, but I'm still human. Oh, look who's here. Una nueva madre aprende a patinar y con una pierna rota Va a terminar. No tienes que ser perfecto para ser un padre perfecto. Miles de hermanos que esperan ser adoptados te aceptarán tal como eres. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. I see you mobbing over her. Let's go. Let's mob. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey yo, we mobbing. Come on, girl. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey yo, let's crawl. Hey yo, let's crawl. Hey, let's crawl. Hey yo, let's crawl. Boom. Candidates. We are here talking with Dr. Joyce McNeil, who is running for the 8th Ward seat um, alongside Mr. Alan Griggs. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to ask you about that. Uh, what would you say are some of the key differences that you see between yourself and Mr. Griggs? Well, I think I'm more uh, connected with the resident mm -hmm. uh, and has always been for the last 18 years. Mm -hmm. um, I have more of a 
insight of what's going on. I work with our beginning with the water crisis. I have been working with several different organizations, like with Wayne State, uh, uh, with uh, UFM, mm -hmm. different organizations helping us uh, understand the crisis and working with the community. Um, I'm also very uh, educated and understanding public administration. Mm -hmm. I, I know how to um, work with any entity. I believe I have that bigger gap in working with entities and I have a broad uh, budget experience as well. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so those are some of your differences. How about speaking to the current um, and Weaver administration in Flint, what are your thoughts so far on how she's done in her first two years? Well, when you first get into office, the first two years are your most difficult years. Mm -hmm. And I, I always call those your trials in the area right. uh, part of it. But as a whole, I think she did pretty good in bringing awareness to the city. Mm -hmm. I think she has done a pretty good job uh, uh, putting Flint back on the map, uh, getting the resources we need. Um, I know it's very challenging because her, she has a heck of a position uh, in the decision-making process. Um, so based on, for, as a citizen, I think she's doing pretty good with what she has to work with. Mm -hmm. I think we could have gotten a lot further, uh, but we had some type of interruption in it. So uh, I believe that I can work with any administration. Uh, that's what a public administrator does. Uh, it get past the negative or whatever it is and kind interruption. Of interruption. What do you What do you mean? Uh, the The recall probably was the recall was one of the interruption yeah. uh, that kind of threw side things on the side track. Right. Um, based on listening to the public, you got mixed opinion on that as well. Right. But as a whole, uh, I think that the administration could, uh, with any administration, do a better job. When you're working with the public, there's always room to do a better job. Right. Uh, but you got to have somebody um, <clears throat> working together, and hopefully, um, that coming in as a new city council, and that we come in with a different breed of city council, mm -hmm. that we all can see that we should be able to sit down and work together and get things done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's an, an enormous amount of. Um, divisiveness uh, between city leadership it, it feels like um, yes I don't know if you'd agree you'd agree yeah yes it uh, is what 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 do you think um, drives some of that social dynamic in your assessment like what's going on with the constant infighting um, I think we've been doing things the same way the same process mm -hmm. for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And we forgot, we hadn't looked up and realized the world has changed. Mm -hmm. And our city council has not, in my opinion, made that change. Um, nowadays, city council need to be in more training. They have to have a, quite a bit of training because you, you got to be able to understand uh, leadership, shared leadership. You got to be able to understand shared services. So you're gonna have to be able to, um, everybody's trying to fight for their own interests, but you, there gonna come a time that you're gonna have to come together. And work together. And be yeah. more uh, uh, cohesive right. in, in, a, in our decision-making process. But when you just focus on five votes, which I hear a lot, I'm just trying to win and get my five people to vote for me and vote for everything I say. And I think we lose focus. You don't have to worry about your five vote if you're doing what the charter says does. If we follow that charter and adhere to the charter, then I think we can do a better job. Uh, what do you mean you don't need five votes if you adhere to the charter? Well, that's what I'm saying about is that is that if we adhere to the charter. Because the charter provides a sort of common and so vision. And you have to have so many votes to pass an agenda. Right. What I'm saying is that there's too much commotion over who I want my five people to win. So if I say this here, this five person vote for everything I say, that's not the role of a city council person. City council represent the legislative body, then also I represent my community. So what I'm saying is that we need to have a very clear picture of what our job is and right. what our responsibilities are. And if we got that 
very clear, then we shouldn't have any problems. Right. Um, uh, we should, our whole focus, my whole concern is human rights first. Mm -hmm. Human rights. We can never violate human rights. Okay. Period. That's just, uh, that's just not even on the table. And where do you see some of that coming up in terms of this, the city's current situation? Well, and the water quality. Well, what the quality of the water, you know, uh, clear drinking water is a human right issue. It's a yeah. civil right. And affordable too. And it's affordable. And people can't afford yeah. it. Yeah. And so somebody uh, will have to say no. There come a point where, as a city council person, you know, you're going to have to be able to step out of your comfort zone and say this is not right and this is it's not a violation. Right. Yeah. yeah. And this is a violation or whatever. And I believe that we got to rebuild trust and trust is hard to rebuild once it's broken. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna be one of the biggest challenge is coming in and being able to trust one another and regain the trust of the community. Yeah, so um, in terms of kind of the overarching vision that all the city council members can get behind, you were mentioning the charter. Mm -hmm. um, I think another thing too is the Imagine Flint master plan mm -hmm. that was put together. Um, I, I wonder your thoughts on the master plan and also I've heard I've heard some people say that I've spoken with personally like oh should we reevaluate the master plan particularly given that the water crisis happened yeah I worked on the um, education and um, education part of the master plan and uh, and economic development uh, from the beginning to the mm -hmm. end I was a part of the team mm -hmm. and uh, since the water crisis I have always stated that the water crisis should we should go back and revisit the master plan and mm -hmm. implement the Flint water crisis and that master plan. Uh, so as a stand now, the, uh, and that way we will have an objective. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think we have a clear objective of those funds that came through here because this, they're not laid out in the public. So I think the master plan is up for review anyway. After so many years, we have to go back in it anyway. And that should be one of the first thing I think city council should look at is let's go back and uh, revisit the master plan. Mm -hmm. um, there's been also some talks, uh, proposals to make Flint a dry city. Um, so making alcohol only available in, in bars and restaurants, but less of the liquor stores, party stores uh, around downtown. What do you think about those kinds of proposals? I'm not an advocate of that particular scenario, but I am an advocate of that we have too many liquor stores mm -hmm. uh, in the underserved communities, mm -hmm. and they create problems. Right. And uh, what I don't like about liquor stores is they comes in and they, whether we're telling you how we want our community to be, the liquor store comes in and transfer our community. So when a liquor store is in your community in order for it to stay open, it needs to somebody have to be an alcoholic. So that's <laughs> what they go. Their goal is to make alcohol make people become alcoholic and make them become drunks. Sure. So uh, now so you're taking our value away from us. I don't think we should have liquor stores inside of the community, just like most suburban doesn't have liquor stores uh, in a community. Uh, I think we should have them in certain areas, but not uh, so many of them in our community. African American have too many liquor stores, mm -hmm. in their and it's not that necessary. Yeah. Well, uh, we only have a few minutes left, mm -hmm. so I thought to close, um, you could give a kind of final pitch to the voters of the 8th Ward, not to me, but maybe directly into the camera. Uh, just give them your little spiel, you know, why you should be uh, the city council woman for the 8th Ward uh, after this November. After November 7th, when you select me as your city council mm -hmm. um, for the 8th Ward, the first thing I'm going to be is responsible. Number two, I am going to be approachable. Number three, I am going to be reachable. Mm -hmm. I put in a plan how I can uh, contact my uh, constituent. Number four, I'm going to work very close with the eight ward and making sure that we addressed all those issues that we talked about when I was walking uh, walking around, getting your uh, votes and getting you to vote for me. I'm going to be more committed with working with any administrator that become as of November 7, no matter who the mayor be. Is my responsibility make sure that I fulfill that seat to the highest. I am going to follow the charter. I'm going to be ethical, and I'm going to make more decisions. And I am going to listen to both sides and listen to my constituents.
and I thank you for your vote. Yeah, well, and I thank you for joining us here today, uh, Dr. McNeil. It's been really great talking with you and thank hearing you. your ideas. All right, thank you. Um, and that is it for today on Meet the Candidates. Uh, for those of you who can access videos online, you can watch the other interviews we've done in this series. If you go to YouTube and you go to the Spectacle Productions page and you go to the video tab, you can look at all of the Meet the Candidates interviews. I think we've done maybe around 15 or 20 interviews in total with uh, different candidates for both the city council races and the mayoral race. Um, so be sure to go online, check those out, get yourself informed going into the November 7th election. Um, and keep staying tuned. So thanks a lot and we will see you again. WFOV 92.1 LPF in Flint may cause one to think, may cause sleeplessness, agitation, motivation, and a strong desire to get involved. In rare cases, some may experience euphoria, a sense of community, and a relief of futility. Some listeners have reported in-depth, informed conversations, a better understanding of diversity, and a strong desire to get along. Be warned that programming on WFOV 92.1 LPFM Flint is not for the feeble-minded or those prone to intolerance, prejudice, and or bigotry. Before ingesting WFOV 92.1 LPFM content, listeners are advised to seek the advice of community advocates, activists, and supporters. That said, please enjoy Be Heard, Our Voices Radio, WFOV 92.1 LPFM Flint. You've messed up your son's haircut. Do you try to fix it? Work with what you've got? Or show solidarity? Thank you, baby. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. They say you don't have to be so strong. But this is my mother, my purpose. Strength is not optional. See, I lift her now like she raised me then. So I know my strength is super, but I'm still human. Look who's here. Yes. Heard about the scarecrow who won an award? He was outstanding in his field. <laughs> Una nueva madre aprende a patinar y con una pierna rota. Va a terminar. No tienes que ser perfecto para ser un padre perfecto. Miles de hermanos que esperan ser adoptados te aceptarán tal como eres. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. is no less than any other family. My heart doesn't, My heart doesn't see race. race. Even love, love is love. love.